So I had a couple of questions recently at a few gigs when I was playing guitar about my guitar pedal board. Some laughed that I was uh, launching some sort of a shuttle. Uh, and then there were other jokes, of course. But thought I'd take a quick minute to explain what's going on to those folks that were asking. So the background here is that I am a ham-fisted bass player by trade. And uh, I occasionally fill in on drums and also sometimes fill in on guitar. So I'm not what you would call the guitarist's guitarist. I mash chords, I only support, I only play on certain parts of songs. So my rig, as complicated as this might look, is actually pretty simple. Um, but I do get a lot out of what's here. So I'll go ahead and explain the signal path. This is not going to have any kind of sound. So it's just a matter of explaining what pedals are here and the signal path and the reasoning behind it. So it starts with either the guitar cable or the wireless, which I might switch at the input here of the Boss MS3. So guitar and either wired or wireless, and I'll swap it. I'll, I'll start with the wireless, but if for some reason it goes out on me, I go ahead and use the cable. That's into the input of the MS3. In the MS3, which has effects and effects loops, I go in this logical order. So I've got the input of the guitar, then I go into a pitch shifter, and then I go into a phaser. From there, I go effects loop out. And that effects loop out goes to the wah. And from the wah into the input of the Boss IR200, which is my amp simulator. And again, because I'm a very simple guitarist, I've only got two channels, a clean and a drive channel. Nothing more. I keep it very basic. I have a basic working clean channel and I have a basic working drive channel. In the effects loop of this amp, I go to my compressor, which I have on in a, a relatively mild setting. It's just to kind of help with a little bit of the sustain and even things out. And then from the compressor back over to the amp. And then from the output of the amp, back into the effects return of the MS3. From there, I go into a slow gear and then a chorus. And I also use the delay and reverb from this unit. I get a little bit of ambience from here as well, and I enhance it somewhat on the MS3, but on both of these, I keep really mild settings so it doesn't get too washy. From the output of here, I go to the TU2, and this is basically a master mute. Uh, from here, I go out to the DI, and the front of house gets that. I also go to my mixer because in the boss tuners, you have a regular output, which gets muted and you have a bypass, which is always on. So I use that to go to a small three channel XLR mixer here. And what this does is this will send that dry, well, my whole guitar signal out as a separate line to here, which will now feed my in-ear monitor. Now, the reason why I don't want to get the in-ear monitor directly from the front of house when possible is because I can also have other things that I'll explain in a moment, uh, aside from the other band, when I mute. The reason why I do this is because before a song starts, if I have a few seconds of dead space, I can mute this and still hear myself in the in-ears to strike a couple of chords on the guitar, or if I'm playing keyboard, strike a couple of notes in the keyboard to make sure I'm in the correct key before the song starts. Then I unmute it and I'm off to the races. One thing I forgot to mention, up here in the, in, in the guitar signal, I also have this Dr. Scientist frequency analyzer. And it's, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven band EQ. And you can see that work there.
Now, I absolutely do not need that there. That's just for my own curiosity to get an idea of where I'm sitting at in the frequency band. Um, this thing is accurate, but what it is fed might not be. I'm not going to explain the science of that. Nonetheless, out of my own curiosity, I kept that there. I had the room for it. That was that. So to reiterate, the guitar signal is wired or wireless, front of the MS-3, four cable method to include the wah and the amp, effects loop back into the compressor, and the, then back into the MS-3 for some from additional effects, out to the TU-2, and then DI out to the house. The bypass out to my in-ear so I can hear myself when I mute, so that the house doesn't hear me, but I still hear myself. That's it for guitar. In terms of what else is going on in the pedal board, as I explained before, occasionally I will fill in on keyboard. So that's what this LS2 is here for. This LS2 here is to mute and unmute my guitar. This one is to mute and unmute in my ears, my keyboard, and a line that I get from the drummer so that I can have his click because not the, the whole band is not on the click, it's just the drummer. I like to hear the click myself to be as in time as possible. And I also get a direct line with the sampler and his vocal so that I can demand less from the front of house. I forgot to mention also this cable here is for the front of house instead of a wedge. This is my wedge. That's this cable here. So these three XLRs go out to the house, to the front of house for my vocal, guitar, and keys. What comes in is would have been a wedge is this, and this is my wedge for my in-ears. But back to this piece here. This other much smaller pedal board, which only has really two pedals, has an LS2 and has a DI. Now, what's going on here is that the keyboard goes into the LS2 and the AB channels here are front of house, which is this DI, which that orange cable will route out to here. And that goes out to the, out to the front of house. The quarter inch routes over to this mixer right here. And then that goes to this, this uh, the, the, the in-ear monitors here, so I can hear that. So same, same exact thing. I can mute that to the house, but still hear myself hit on a couple of keys to make sure I've got the right notes, unmute it, and I'm off to the races for the next song. And the same thing with the drummer, the line that he sends me, it's a quarter inch that's routed to here, and I'm able to hear it in the in the in-ear monitors. Because it's, it's, it's two lines in, it's the, it's the drummer and it's the keyboard, and it's only one XLR out, and that feeds to this sort of keys line here, and I can control the volume with this as well. So what I do is I keep the in-ear monitors at master volume all the way up, and I, it's kind of like gain staging in a way, and I keep my, my levels moderate on the way to it so I don't get clipping. So I give myself as much headroom as possible while not making myself deaf or pushing too much gain to distort the signal. That's pretty much it. This XLR here, this is a bonus. So this is actually, if you, if you can see that there, it's actually uh, a split cable. It's this male end to one female end and the other female end. So again, I said this, is, this goes to the front of house, comes into me, the other thing that comes to me is an ambient mic, and that's where that other thing is going. So this is the ambient and the front of house. The ambient is this guy right here. It's really hard to see because I've covered it with, a, with uh, some t-shirt material so that it's not making hard contact, but it is a long XLR, uh, sorry, uh, tabletop, like a mixer, Microphone. It's really long, thin, it's almost like a like a like a snake, kind of neck, goose neck, and that's sitting in here, and that's my ambient microphone. So I have a little bit of ambient in my ears, because what I used to do up until recently is a no no, and that's keep one ear in and one ear out because I I really wanted to have some outside noise 
to feel the house, to hear everything. I've remedied that by just keeping a, a Y cable here so I can get the front of house and an ambient mic into one mix here. And so far it's been working out great. That's self-explanatory. I really think it's important to keep eyes on a clock while you're at a gig. And that's the entire rig. Uh, maybe it's a little more complicated than it seems. To me, it seems really simple because I don't have a whole lot going on a guitar. I don't have a lot going on in the keyboard. And the mic is also simple. It's just that it's all mashed together. And some of the things that are powered by USB have this guy over here. So I plug it in whenever I'm needing to charge. So hopefully that makes, oh, how could I forget the nano freeze? I also have a freeze pedal out here. It's in the chain on the way out to the DI. So MS3 to the nano freeze to the tuner. And what this does for, for uh, folks that aren't aware, when I hold this down and that light's on, if I strike a note, and I hold that down, whatever note I struck, it just holds it. It's like an indefinite sustainer. And you can adjust, I keep, the, I keep it at, you know, taped at a certain setting, but you can adjust the volume of that held note. You can have it at unison, a little softer or a little louder, depending on what you wanna do. I have it at about approximately 90% of the volume. So whatever loudness my initial chord is or note, when I hold this down, it'll sustain at 90% of that volume so that if I do anything else on top of it, like a little riff or any additional strumming, it doesn't start to get overbearing. Hope that all makes sense. And maybe this will give somebody an idea or an alternative idea on how to set up their board depending on their use. But this is, for me, really fit for purpose. And for me, it makes sense. And it took a while to get here, uh, not only through years of experimentation as to what I need on my board, but the actual need of the gig. And I didn't want it to be where I had an even bigger board where I had the keyboard pedals along as well, because then I go from a PT2 to a PT Pro. Uh, I say that because those are, what, those are the pedals I happen to have. And I just really wanted to downsize a little bit and make it somewhat modular. So now with the way it works is, if I'm only playing guitar and singing, I just bring this board. If I'm also supporting on keyboard parts, it's a simple cable addition. I plug in those two pedals right there on that board, and now I've got the option to bring the keyboards in and it's all routed into the same in-ear mix and there's already a provided line for the front of house. Anyways, hope that makes sense. And thanks for watching. Cheers.